Welcome back to Everyday Hockey, presented by DraftKings, the leader in daily fantasy sports. Don't forget to use promo code THPN upon sign up for a bonus. And if you're a regular user, plug that promo code in for a weekly deal. Today, we talk about the Ottawa Senators hiring Pierre Maguire as Senior Vice President of Player Development. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Now, Dylan, this isn't even the craziest news to drop today, as we talked about it last week in one of our videos, that there was a rumor that Duncan Keith would be traded, and it looks like he landed in Edmonton. Yeah, Duncan Keith gets traded, like you said, not the craziest news of the day. Pierre Maguire uh, being hired by the Ottawa Senators. I'm, I'm, I'm dude. sorry, <laughs> folks. I can't, I can't believe it. It's just nuts. So I saw a poll question earlier today that said, what is the funnier news? And I think keyword funnier was Duncan Keith landing in Edmonton or Pierre Maguire getting a job in the NHL. And if it was surprising, I mean, maybe... You know, you could make an argument for Keith, but funny? No, no, no. This is hilarious that Pierre Maguire lands another job in the NHL in management. I think like 30 years uh, after he originally did, and that's how he started his hockey career, was in management and coaching. Yeah, and listen, a lot of people only know Pierre Maguire, the broadcaster, you know, the guy that's, you know, seen everybody play peewee hockey when they were eight years old, right? That, that guy, everyone knows that. But, I mean, he's had a long career in coaching, and actually he started at a very young age coaching uh, uh, in hockey, starting uh, humble roots at Hobart College, Ooh. coaching for five hundred dollars a year uh, with Pierre Maguire. Eventually, he ended up at St. Lawrence as an assistant, and that's where he met one Scotty Bowman. Yeah, and Scotty Bowman then gave him the opportunity, you know, after meeting with him and working with him, um, to bring him aboard the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, originally, he was working as a special assignment scout, and then was brought on as an assistant coach. You're you're running to Tim's for the coffee. That's the special <laughs> assignment scout. <laughs> Yeah, and it's funny because, again, we, we know him as the quirky, kind of, you have a love and hate relationship with him on the broadcaster side. Canadians, I think, are a little, you know, we, we roll our eyes at him. We don't necessarily hate him as much as some of the American hockey fans because, again, like, American hockey fans have been deprived of a lot of hockey coverage, right? It's, it's generally just NBC or your, you know, your local broadcasting network. And Pierre Maguire is just shoved down your throat as he's one of the main figures there. We're in Canada. We're lucky to have a lot of them. So I understand why, for us, it's funny. And for some people down south, they're just like pulling their hair out. Like this, this is absolutely insane. But going back to his uh, his his resume, had success as an assistant coach in uh, with the Penguins, no less. Yeah, winning the Stanley Cup uh, with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, moving on then to the Hartford Whalers, where he ended up as head coach of the Whalers at the age of 32. Um, now apparently he was not a respected head coach, not by uh, his his players or not by other teams that would come into Hartford. Yeah, exactly. At the time, I believe he was 32 years old, and that was the record at the time for the youngest coach in the National Hockey League. Can you League. imagine what Pierre looked like at 32? I, I'm just imagining that curly hair, you know? I don't want to. Um, <laughs> but anyways, there was so much wrong with Hartford, and people want to go, I mean, we could do a whole separate long video on just the Hartford Whalers and themselves. Hey, we might. We, hey, we might. That That's true. Uh, their head coach at the time actually stepped aside because he couldn't handle the lack of drive and care from his players, so he couldn't even get uh get his culture implemented get the word across and his systems going so he went to a general manager's role pierre stepped in uh assistant then head coach and then assistant general manager when he was the youngest coach at that time that didn't really go over well as dylan just highlighted he was mocked by the players um he was made fun of and and, and just not respected league-wide and then he was eventually fired from the hartford whalers but wait there's more. Gary Bettman actually didn't pay him for, I believe it was his last year, last two years of his working contract because apparently as he was the head coach and working as a general manager in Hartford, he was feeding information to the Edmonton Oilers and also helping their coaching development there. Pierre Maguire, you snake. You and you know, snake. Gary Batman, when he came down, he's like, listen, Pierre, I respect it, but you got caught. So I got to do something. Well, and that was, I believe, the first year that Gary Batman actually entered the league as, uh, as you know, president. So that's well, just amazing. hilarious. Kind of foreshadowing after that time with the Hartford Whalers, he actually joined the Ottawa Senators as a scout and then an assistant coach. Do you want to know what happened after that? Tell me. He was fired. <laughs> The Pierre Maguire way. Uh, if you look at his resume, yeah, you may have coached at a young age and had a lot of opportunity, but man, did his jobs not well, last long. Well, he seems to get a, you know, his foot in the door as a scout, and then he works his way up to assistant. Then they realize this guy actually <laughs> doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, he was also the inaugural coach after that for the Baton Rouge Fish Kings of the 
ECHL. I know there's not a lot of hockey down south in the bayou, but there've been uh, there there've been spurts of it every now and then. And I actually was surprised to learn that Pierre Maguire was uh, the head coach for that team. And then after that was the he was move fired. In, by oh, the way, he was fired. <laughs> uh, the move into broadcasting uh, was after Baton Rouge, and you know now we have the monster of uh, Pierre Maguire that we have today. And whether you again, whether he's your cup of tea or not, look. I don't, upon looking at his resume on the coaching side and, and in management, I don't really respect him there, but you have to respect a guy who's, you know, lasted 30 plus years in broadcasting. He has his niche. He knows his quirks. He plays them up. And the one thing, you know, I'm not a fan of him personally as a consumer, but what I do respect is he knows it and he doesn't care what people think. He's going to, Pierre's going to Pierre. Pierre's, Pierre's going to Maguire, baby. No, he is. And, you know, we make a lot of jokes about it, but I do respect his hockey knowledge at the end of the day. Yeah, you might not like his gimmick on air, but the guy knows hockey. And apparently the NHL, they respect that too, because... I know he appeared on Spit and Chicklets. I don't know if it was last year or a few months ago, but he revealed that, you know, within this last decade, um, you know, the, the later part of his broadcasting career, he was approached by the Montreal Canadiens and the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, to at least interview for a management position, whether it's the general manager job, he didn't really disclose, although I think it was it was up there in Montreal at the time before Mark Bergevin actually uh, got the position. So the National Hockey League has been high on Pierre, in the last 10 years anyways, I'm sure there was a little bit of a lull <laughs> since his first uh, his first go around with them. So interested to see how it plays out in Ottawa. I mean, he's back in Ottawa and he's back in a comfortable position, you know, scouting. Um, I mean, name a more iconic duo than Pierre Maguire and Eugene Melnick. I'll wait. I'll wait, folks. <laughs> that is going to be a hell of a storyline to play out this year. That's it for the video today. Tell us what rap albums are featured in the studio in the comments below. Smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.